If you have a short attention span, I don't blame you. This video is a little bit long, but stick with me here. I tried to make it as snappy as possible for you. So all materials used and the link to the free sheets I made are in the description, but running off means you'll seriously be missing out on a lot of good tips and tricks that will make you play better and make your DM happier, in my opinion. <laughs> Let's mix a D&D &D sheet, a sprinkle of aesthetics, and a twist of organization and a person that will ultimately get real tired of a lot of time-consuming upkeep and see what we get. For all the new people in the back, hi, hello. My name is Jenna, I go by Unlucky Muse, and I'm a digital artist that sometimes makes YouTube videos. For those returning, you might have already seen parts one and two of my D&D journal journey. Link in the cards for the curious, but you don't need to have watched those videos to get value from this walkthrough. The evolution of this character journal is being mindful about what information is most used, at what time, and how frequently, with roleplay and aesthetic elements in mind. It's meant to not feel like a chore when you're feeling lazy or overwhelmed and supportive when you're feeling a little extra. Grab any or all ideas and throw out what doesn't work for you. Test things out, dig things up, and then please do share in the comments so we can all build the best journal for our characters and our own brains. Okay, that's the intro, let's go. Firstly, scrap paper, reduce, reuse, recycle, ugly notes first, Pretty notes later. Here's the front page. I slapped together a colorful background and I'm just being really casual with the doodles that will end up in here that can be easily taken out and put back in. You're going to be seeing this front page for a few seconds at the start of each session. So focus on things that will make you smile. Next is personality blurbs. Those picks for traits, ideal, bond, flaws, and deity stuff when you build a character wrapped up in a very easy but aesthetically pleasing presentation. This is just a regular piece of patterned paper and a regular piece of printed paper that I ripped up to look like thought bubbles. Then you just tack the pieces down lightly with some tape or a glue stick, check in after a main quest or a level up and see what feels right, or what new things you want to role play your character to grow into. This is the main page, the one I spend most of my time on, and it's part of the custom character sheets I made that I'm sharing for free with my Discord community. Click the link in the description and it will take you right to the pinned post that has the Google Drive link. As you can see, this is filled with the meat and potatoes stats, the information you'll be referring to the most. The triangle symbols are for a short or a long rest, and the diamond is for a long rest. I also set up a tiny notepad section here for keywords or to gather your thoughts so you don't forget something if it's not your turn to speak or something will be occurring really soon, but you might get distracted beforehand. The next two pages are mostly used during combat. I found I like a hybrid setup for my spells. This is basically a chart of all the spells my character has and will have, color-coded as well, and I pair this with the spells 5e, Android, and iOS app, which is great because this is a complete database that allows you to type the first few letters of a spell and look it up in a snap. No flipping through pages or taking extra time to pull out cards. Honestly, yes, I love the aesthetic, but I will forever be a lover of Control F or Command F on a Mac. I use a red B to denote the spell as a bonus action, along with a color code for the type of spell. Okay, so now we're gonna jump around a little bit, so bear with me here. In the past, I've had this list paired with my backpack items section, where I'd have info on spell components, etc. This literally requires jumping around, as you can see, which slows things down. If we're trying to prepare spells in the morning, which you'd only have a little time for, or strategizing with the party when you're in the heat of battle. So here you can see I have color-coded spells for consumable and unique items. The unique items can be treated like collections. I have a check mark if I have a component needed for it. For consumable items, I have the number of times I can use the spell. In the shopping section here, I have a printed list of all the spells my character will ever learn and the required components if they are consumable. This obviously helps with collecting these ingredients, but it's also a quick lookup if I want to flavor the spell I'm casting. So this way, my backpack section is that much easier to navigate and this sheet can do a better job of telling me quickly and efficiently what I can and can't do when I just want to play the game. I will say, for clerics, 
Diamonds can make things a little tricky and for anyone else who uses them as well. So any spare dust or bits of diamond do get trapped in the backpack. This is Combat Central. I have a space here at the top for important reminders, forecaster, extra attack, etc. This space is standard weapon information and I added info on my spiritual weapon as well. Really any attacks you use consistently, just set them up where you can see them really quickly. Like I have spiritual weapon here. Next is the space to accommodate ammo, 20 arrows or bolts to a quiver. Then there's this. This is pretty self-explanatory, the proficiencies. This info isn't really looked at too often, but I put it here as we're coming to the end of the character sheet. So then I have an area for notes at the bottom, having a little notepad here and on the front page I found was super useful in practice. You can get little thoughts out of your head to listen better. If you're a healer, you can track who's low on hit points and you can make a note for next session to make sure you don't forget the important decisions or choices that you had wanted to make. It's a little bit different than having note paper that you're taking notes on for general session stuff. Here is where I put some of the party art that I made. And this is a good time to mention that in addition to giving out the character sheet I just had showed you, I'm also interested in starting a digital art lottery for people's original characters. So if you're interested in free art for your character, be sure to click that same Discord link and it'll take you to that information as well. I also have a link in the description to my art station if you want to take a peek at my art portfolio. These are the currently attuned items with their info. I do find cards work well here since they can be homebrew items. I think you can get specifically sized card holders for this size binder, but honestly, I just cut down an eight and a half by 11 sized card holder and it works great. This page starts my very specific copy pasta references from the books. Instead of stopping the flow of game and opening up the right books to double check some info related to my character for her level up, I simply refer to these couple of pages. It's way faster and it's better because at the end, I can add to it if my character ends up with a permanent blessing or a curse or ability during the campaign. All of the information is contained here. You'll see the level up chart only has what's important to this character. Only pull what you're using and what you will be using for your character level up. I highly recommend this. Okay, are you listening? This part is important. Here is the character growth page I didn't end up using because I didn't think critically about what would actually work for me. Make a character journal for the player that you are, not the player you want to be. One of the biggest problems with most plans and lists and aesthetic DIY is actually convincing our big dumb brain to engage and upkeep. If you are the type that likes the idea of looking back on character's growth, then I'd recommend making it a part of your level up routine as a habit stack. You can make a little reminder next to the level up table in the player's handbook printout from earlier, and then reduce friction by writing down only a few key words on the character growth page, or a hard limit of one to two, three sentences to sum up your character's outlook on themselves, the party, and the mission. For the front page personality blurbs, this can help inform any changes to it, and it can also help you get into the mindset of past, present, and future for your roleplay. Behind this is the backstory to my character, if you struggle with this sort of thing, I recommend the but and therefore outline or Pixar's fourth rule of storytelling. If you want me to make a video on this and on building a good character background for D&D, let me know in the comments and I'll go into it in more detail in another video. We now return to these pages. Listen, if there's one thing you're going to take away from this whole video, it should be the spell gold cost component list if you are a caster. Shopping adventures are slow in general and they can slow down even more when you or your DM have to go digging for this information. Your DM and your party members will thank you and you definitely want to stay on your DM's good side, right? Here are my character's mushroom notes. It's a fun thing to do but don't ever feel boxed in by one method. You may feel motivated to do notes like this one month and then dry bullet note facts the next or nothing at all. Go with your own personal flow in the moment. Let's be real, other players will usually try to remind you of important things anyway and you can always ask questions in your private player group chat. Also remember to have a private player only group chat. <laughs> So if you like the video so far, please consider subscribing and also check out our Discord because if you've watched this far into the video already, I think you'd really find a sense of community in our family over there.
If you're not really a note taker, but you do like the idea of having some sort of notes, I'll recommend The List. This is a format ripped from video game quest logs. Um, it also functions as a loose timeline of events, and you can write it in the voice of your character if you want for extra roleplay flavor. Highly recommend this one. Next is Item Station. I have it separated into Backpack, which has more mundane general adventure stuff, magical items, potions, and scrolls, and equipped it. You can also have a section for a component patch if you wanted to roleplay that. Another idea is to make note of what items are gifts. I found these categories were the fastest way to know what I have. If your group really cares about weight management though, I'd recommend a more digital solution that auto calculates for you and allows you to still organize by category. Notion, Google Sheets, fancy PDF, stuff like that. The graveyard. So if you think it's fun or interesting, try to keep track of the body count of the good guys, friends, monsters, bad guys, and see if it affects your character. Could make for some really fun roleplay moments. Parties never remember the body count. Here are my clean notes after making ugly ones on scrap paper. Not much to say about these. If you want a video on note taking, I can share my process, just let me know in the comments. I've also been working on a video about summarizing a session as simply and quickly and easily as possible. So if you're interested, please like, subscribe, ring that bell, all that good stuff. I've personally gone mostly digital now with focusing on session notes, but I still use this when needed. All right, the end is near. This is the map I made for the campaign. It's genuinely fun to pull out a map for party questions and planning. Just work with your DM if you want to print out anything. And finally, here's the magic item cards and the other tunable items I can swap to. And that's it! Let me know what you think. I enjoy making these sorts of things in general, so it might be fun to make new ones and come up with new ideas for the community. If you genuinely love spending the extra time collaging, coloring, drawing, handwriting, all that kind of stuff, just lay it over this framework. Again, this journal is meant to be supportive of you if you're feeling creative, but also not feel like a chore when you're feeling lazy or overwhelmed. I tried to make this as balanced as possible for my needs and hopefully for yours as well. D&D is complicated. If you find yourself constantly looking up something, fumbling or forgetting, it's just a sign to write it down or type it up in a way that's fast and easy to find. Please do grab a copy of the character sheet below. It's a really easy to modify Google Doc, way better than the PDF and Photoshop stuff I shared in the past, though I will still continue to share that in the Google Drive folder just to meet everyone's needs. And while you're visiting the server to pick up those links, please vote in the Character Portrait Art Lottery. Drawing brings me joy and I love drawing characters. Also, if you are interested, post in the channel with information on your OC so we can get to know other people's characters and who I might end up drawing. Let me know your favorite Critical Role character in the comments, or if you're not a critter, put a white heart in the comment and I'll know that you are one of the ones that watched all the way through. Which, by the way, if you're watching me right now, hi, hello, thank you, you've just made my day. I definitely hope to meet you on the Discord. And as a treat, here are some free Steam keys for the first ones to watch this all the way through. Thanks for watching. If you liked this, please like and sub to stick around and help me on my YouTube quest. And please comment to let me know how I can improve so I can make even better videos for you.